Hi, how's it going? Now, it's very rare, in fact, I think this might be the first time that I'll post a comment about someone else's YouTube clip up on my channel here. Mostly because I really prefer to use this channel to put out information and instructional content rather than just my opinions. Having said that, I saw something the other day, a clip, I think it's a trailer of a film or, or documentary or something called The Power of Chi. And I suppose it, it sort of took me back 40 years to when I first started training in Chinese martial arts. I did some boxing and judo as a kid, then aged 17, 18, I started practicing Chinese martial arts for quite a while. Back then, especially, you couldn't go far in Chinese martial arts without coming up against the term or the concept of qi. I always found if you ask five different people what qi means, you get five different definitions. But broadly speaking, I had some teachers who described it as a, a sort of combination of things, a combination of your breathing, your movement, particularly a sort of spiraling type movement, your posture and structure, and your focus and intent. So for them, it was a sort of a, a holistic thing. It was a combination of all these different aspects of how we operate. For other people, particularly more from the health perspective, Qi was the body's natural energy. Obviously our body creates energy through breathing and through ingesting food. Uh, some people might say our body also has its own natural sort of bioenergetic field or an electromagnetic field, certainly. Though that is extremely weak. You, you couldn't move a, a compass needle with it. But nonetheless, some people define that in health terms, that's how they view Qi. And then there were some other people as well who said Qi, yes, it was this energy, this power, but that power could be uh, worked on and built up and increased, even to the extent of you could sort of uh, project it out beyond the body, usually through the hands, and this power, this force would be strong enough to physically affect other people. It would repel them or make them fall over or whatever. In effect, it was like a sort of kind of force field. So almost like some sort of superhuman power, right? Now, the interesting thing I found, at least in my personal experience, was that the teachers who went for that last definition often developed schools that turned quite sort of, uh, how should we say, they became the master, right? They had these special powers. The interesting thing was, again, from my personal experience, those special powers never worked on me. They did work on some other students. So those students then became part of the, the inner circle. And I was always quite open-minded about this. At one point when I left my original teacher, I went around loads of places. I trained with, with people like Dave Turton in combatives, an excellent teacher, all the way through to people who claimed they could do no touch work and, and that sort of thing. And again, I found that explanation of chi energy never really worked on me or for me. So when I saw this clip of a person who at least appears to be professing to have these uh, powers, this chi power that he can use to manipulate other people, I was quite interested, but then also sort of disappointed in a way to see it was really a lot of the same old tricks that I saw decades ago. And what this person has done, as uh, presumably at some expense, flown in people, including I think there's a UFC fighter, there's a strongman competitor, there's a, as an athlete, I think he's a basketball player. Uh, I think there possibly a BJJ guy in as well. So, you know, experienced people who know what they're doing and is using these to demonstrate the power of chi. So he does his thing and he moves the people around. Now it's interesting to note that none of them and move back in the same way as his students are. So is there anything to this? Does this man have chi power? Does the stuff he is doing demonstrate that there is this magical force? So I thought it might be interesting to take a look at some of the things that he does and try and replicate them here and give you at least my explanation or understanding of how they work. So Matt's here this morning and he's going to help me explore the power of chi. Uh, so one of the first things that we see in the film is the person taking this strong stance with the fist up. And I think it's the UFC guys doing this again. So the guy's got to be a strong chap, right? So he has the man stand like this. And then the idea is that using the power of chi with just the fingers, 
I can move this person. So of course if I try without the power of chi, what happens? It hurts my fingers, okay? And I get moved back. With the power of chi, it goes quite easily. And you see the dog is helping as well. Dog chi is very powerful. So once again, without chi, now with chi, it goes very easily, really. <laughs> Let's have a look at what's happening in more detail. So you'll notice when people do these chi power tricks, because that's in effect what they are, they get the person to stand in a certain position, right? And then what they normally say to them is, be strong, be strong as you can. And what does the person do? Of course, they tense everything up, right? Because that's being strong. Once the person is tense, all I have to do is move this fist out of alignment a little bit. His balance is already gone. <clears throat> okay. So, in effect, what I'm doing, if I push directly into his structure here, as we'll see in a little bit, then it's a strong structure. Everything is lined up. All I've got to do is take something a little bit out of alignment. Because the rest of him is tense, everything else follows. Once I've got him off balance, then I'll just give a little push. So, no chi biomechanics. So the second thing, or one of the next things we see, is people doing this sort of basic sort of what we call push hands pattern. So we're kind of circling the arms. Uh, again, Matt's not done push hands before, so I'm not going to give a tutorial on push hands. But once again, what happens is the chi master is able to push the other person with his chi, right? But again, what happens is this, it's all about position. This is a fixed movement, first of all, so I know what's going on. I know where the hands are going and what the position is going to be. So what happens is, as we bring this arm across, this elbow is very easy to push in, if people have not done this before, against the body. And of course, what does that do? It takes the balance again. So, we, again, this is not proper push hands it's this kind of movement, or at least part of it is. Once we get to this position here, we've got that elbow pushing in, but what the Chi Master also does is just lift a little bit here. So you see how we've got that balance coming up again. So if we combine those two things together with the power of Chi, <laughs> we can push him into the hedge. <laughs> so, so again, of course, it's biomechanical because if you think of the, the center line of the body here, the elbow is being compressed into that. If, if Matt pushes me here, see, once you're there, the weight is being pushed on the back foot. It gives a little bit of lift and it's very easy to move. Biomechanics. Now, another one you'll see this person do is push from a sitting down or lying down position as well. It's a similar sort of setup. I'm here. I put an arm out and Matt you push against my arm but be strong so again I tell him where to place himself I tell him to tense up his whole body and it's quite easy to move him as long as you've got a little bit of structure right I'm, I'm not saying you can just do this straight away necessarily if you've got a little bit of idea about structure if you've done any martial art really you you'll have some understanding of this so once again see he's putting his whole weight on me as long as I can hold this position which I can just by sinking into the chair, then all I've got to do is turn the waist a little, and there we go, he's off away again. The power of chi, biomechanics. So perhaps some people who want to defend that person will say, yeah, but you did all this stuff for years, you've obviously got very powerful chi. Uh, and someone also said to me the other day, it takes decades, decades to learn this stuff. Matt, you ever done Tai Chi? Never. Ever done Qigong? Never. Ever done Chinese martial arts? Never. Right, okay. Let's see if we can give Matt some Qi power. <laughs> so, I'm going to stand in that strong position, right? I'm not a, I'm not a small guy. <laughs> I can root myself down in my stance, and I've got my hands here. Matt, if you use your fingers, so just press forward. No Qi, no Qi, okay? I've got all the Qi. Now, this time press forward, but just take me out of line a little bit, both fists. You shouldn't be able to do that, let's try again. Focus the chi. <laughs> <laughs> Decades or 10 seconds, you know? Because it's biomechanical. 
if I'm locked in to my position, of course, if he presses forward, I've got the whole body weight behind it. If he takes me out of line a little bit, the, the trick is, is not just to come out of line one way, but lift as well. Think of like almost like a three dimensional or slightly spiral movement and it goes. Now, if I take another approach, more like we do in Sistema, say, if he does that again, then I just relax off <laughs> the shoulder, okay? Um, so, is this stuff useful? Well, in terms of uh, certainly Chinese martial arts, or Tai Chi in particular, yes, at a certain level, it's quite basic method. Once people had learnt the movements of the form, we'd go into something called posture testing. So posture testing was where we'd have a person hold a posture from the form. This is one of the early postures from the Yang form. And in order to test the structure, you get your partner to push in. But push in in a certain way that relates to the function of the movement. If Matt kind of pushes me on the shoulder here, for example, then that's not really testing the posture. Now, if I know how to root and everything else, then yeah, I can sort of hold that, right? But in order to test the posture, Matt needs to push this hand here and this hand here. So what's happening here is I've got my structure aligned in such a way that when that force comes in, I expand outwards to meet it a little, I sink down a little bit, and how, how does that feel? Solid. Solid, yeah. right? It's relaxed, right? I'm mm. not, if mm. I tense, then again, as soon as he touches anything, as we've already seen the structure all go. So there is a function for that kind of thing, but it's just to test, it's just to teach people about body alignment. This is not the use of the movement. You don't go around saying, can you push me there, please? <laughs> right? What this is, is a defense against a hook punch and you chop into the uh, into the carotid sinus. If, 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 Matt, yeah, if you're just throwing a hook punch here. Yeah. Now, you see what happens, right? I have to tell him how to attack me. So this is another issue with this kind of training. Uh, this is one reason I moved away. But anyway, that's another story. So see, hook back into the carotid, okay? So that's the function of the posture, but you can check the alignment by doing this posture testing. Biomechanics. So there we go, that's what these feats are from my perspective. They're nothing to do with powerful energy that's sort of transmitted outside the body and all to do with biomechanics and how you set people up to do these tests. For me, if you want to demonstrate the functional aspect of something, then do something functional, you know. If you've got the BJJ guy there or whatever, maybe have a little spa or wrestle with him or something. Do something that's live rather than setting people up for these static demonstrations. Of course that doesn't happen and I suspect we can all guess the reason why. I still think it's a shame that after all this time if people are taken in, I mean back in the day people, some people certainly were, that was pre-internet, but now there should really be no reason for people to be falling for this kind of trick unless of course they, they want to. I just find it can lead to a very unhealthy student-teacher relationship. Now, now, I know some people are going to say, oh, but you do Sistema. You, you guys believe that you can send beams of chi out of your palms and you can do no-touch knockouts and that kind of thing. No, we don't. No, we don't. I've been training for 20 years odd in Sistema quite intensively with Mikhail Ryabko and Vladimir Vaseliev and all those people, and I've never once heard in all that time anyone talk about chi and all the no-contact work has been described and explained in psychological terms. It's one aspect, a small aspect, of studying the psychology of confrontation as well. Uh, nothing about mystical powers at all. In fact, Michael's always very strong on emphasising that point. It doesn't make anyone special, it's just basic human psychology. And of course, that's what is at work with this student-teacher relationship or master of chi relationship with the students. There's a lot of psychology going on in that as well. And I think it's important for people to learn to understand that. Uh, it helps if you find people are trying to manipulate you in some way or, or anything else. It gives you an understanding of that process and how to watch out for it, not just in martial arts, in anything. So there you go, those are some of my thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to put a link up to the guy's video because I suspect sometimes he puts this stuff out to drive traffic to his YouTube site. But if you want to find the power of chi out there and that particular individual, I'm sure you can quite easily. 
Of course, I'd be interested to hear your comments and views and any questions you have. You can just pop them down below and I'll always do my best to answer them. Take care.